looking forward to coming to church. Hallelujah. And being in the house of praise unto the one and only true God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Hallelujah. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Hallelujah. Jesus, we are children of love, amen. We're thankful in the Lord's house today. We're so thankful that He loves us, even when sometimes we're unlovable. And He loves you, even though many times you're unlovable. Thank you, Jesus. 
that he still loves us. Amen. I think it pleases the Lord. I know it pleases the Lord when we come into his house and when we're, and when we're excited to worship him and to honor him. I think it pleases the Lord when, you, when we come into God's house and we want to bless him and we want to praise his name when we have a good attitude. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think it pleases the Lord when we come into his house Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. and we want to bless him and we want to Ooh. praise him and we're, yes. we have a good attitude. Yes. Some of us were forced to come to church today. Good for you. Because it's good for you. It's really good for us. It's really good for us to be in the house of the Lord. So good for you. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I got I got my profile read by um by Pastor Jesse this past week. And um I was reminded and I learned a few things about myself and the, you know, the, the ways that I am and the, the reason why I act certain ways. And um, I seen some things on there that I didn't like. And I, I know that I have to change. Amen. I have to change some of the things. You know, I always want to be the boss. <laughs> I always want to be the boss. It's just the way it is. And I got to change that because I'm not always the boss. Hallelujah. God is the boss. That's just one of the things that I have to change. Amen. Another thing is that I'm so predictable. That, you know, people think like, oh, we know what Pastor, Bob, Pastor Bobby's going to say. Oh, no, it's what Pastor Bobby's going to say. I need to be unpredictable. I shouldn't be so predictable. People shouldn't be able to know exactly what I'm going to do. Because most time it's like, and you know, most time it's kind of snappy, hallelujah. <laughs> Not hallelujah because I'm snappy, but snappy, hallelujah, I got to change, hallelujah. But the Lord is so good that he loves me, even at my lowest. He loves you, even at your lowest. Even when you, you sit there and sulk about poor, poor, pitiful me. It's really not poor, poor, pitiful for you. When I'm feeling sorry for myself, and let me tell you, I've been feeling kind of sorry for myself um, this pa these past couple of days. It's not about me. And it's not poor, poor, pitiful for me. And please, don't get me wrong. I'm so, so, so blessed. But some things are working out in a way that I didn't want it to work out. So I start feeling sorry for myself. Like, oh, poor thing me. Not poor thing me. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. Amen. You're so blessed. Amen. Not poor thing you. If something goes in a different area, hallelujah, you deal with it. You deal with it. You let the Lord move through you. Hallelujah. And Pastor Rocky told me something this morning. He goes, Bob, you got to start thanking the Lord for what is going to take place. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So if you're in the house of the Lord this morning, good for you. Good for you. And make it good. Make it, you know, you know, adjust yourself so that you can receive what God has for you. Because if you come into the house of God because you feel forced and, you know, I know a lot of the kids, they're, they're here because they have to be here. But if you adjust yourself and worship the Lord with your heart, you will be so blessed. Amen. Some of us, some of us, some of us adults, for I mean, there's not an option. If I don't feel like going to church, oh well, too bad. I don't have an option. I don't give myself an option. So sometimes I have to force this flesh to get where this flesh is supposed to be. And it's in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the devil told you. It doesn't matter what your friend told you. It doesn't matter even what your spouse told you. There's not a better place to be than in the house of the Lord. Worshiping the one who gives you breath. Worshiping the one who woke up your babies this morning. Worshiping the one who woke up your family this morning. Hallelujah. Adjust yourself this morning and thank the Lord. 
Thank the Lord for his goodness in your life, for his favor, for his blessing upon you, even when sometimes you don't deserve it. Thank the Lord for his blessing upon you. Thank the Lord for his blessing upon your children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We glorify you in this house today, Lord. And if somebody doesn't want to praise, I'll praise three times more. We'll praise ten times more. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for setting us on our way. Thank you, Lord, that you have the best plan for our lives. Thank you, Lord, that no matter what anybody, no matter what any human thinks, you have the best plan. Thank you, Lord, for not kicking us to the side when we should have been kicked to the side. Thank you, Lord, for not leaving us in the dirt when we should have been left in the dirt because of our bad attitude. But you loved us so much that you brought us out out of that. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's bow our hearts. Let's bow our hearts before the Lord and let's worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Only, only glory to you, Lord God. Come on. Come on, church. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Where would we be, Lord, if it had not been for you? Thank you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on.
our champion, Lord. Hallelujah. Victor, undefeated. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness and for your grace upon your children. Lord, we thank you for every family that is represented here today. We thank you for all of the children, all of the babies, Lord. Bless them. Your peace be upon them, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, that we will receive your word today and not just let it fall, but we will receive it and we will let it grow. And we will be better because of the word of God in us and moving through us. Thank you. We don't only hear the word, but we do the word. Thank you, Lord. Anoint your servant to bring forth all that you have this morning. Thank you for every leader, for every laborer in this church and ministry. Hallelujah. Thank you for the associate pastors, for the worship pastor, for the youth pastor and their families. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for the apostle of the house and for his family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the missionary in the house and for his family. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for our church family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that our day is going to be so blessed because we chose to put you first. Hallelujah. We pray for our nation. We pray for our government. We pray, Lord, that you help us. Help us, Lord. We need your help. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful place that we're so blessed to live on in Hawaii. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for all that you are doing behind the scenes and all that is coming forth. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Lord, especially for those who are hurting, those who have lost loved ones. Please comfort them, Lord. Please blanket them with your peace and please help them to come close to you so that you can come close to them. Thank you, Lord. We pray for every soldier at war, at home, our veterans, their families. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful nation that we live in. Please help us to do what we need to do, Lord, in this time, in this season. We thank you for all of your blessings that are continuously poured out upon us, upon your children, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our all the wonderful things that are taking place. We give you all the glory, all the honor, all the praise be unto you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray and say amen. amen. Praise God. You know, God is no respecter of persons. And Lucifer, who was in heaven, worship leader, archangel, with one third of his angels thought that they could overthrow the kingdom of God. And they ended up on the short end of the stick. <laughs> they ended up on a place where they shouldn't have been. The outcome wasn't a good outcome. Yet God knew that was going to happen, yet they have free will in heaven, so do we on earth. And so today we're going to hear about it. If you're going the wrong way, it's a good time now to make that decision. To just follow God, let him lead your way. Let me tell you something that you might, you know, you might be hiding out. You might be faking it out. And we're going to talk about Jonah just a little bit, although the message on that point always is a message of resurrection. And, the, you know, the, the big fish, he was in the belly. Three days later, he comes out. And that is the message in that, but that's not what I'm going to be preaching today. I'm preaching about how he got on that boat to begin with. I'm preaching about how he was going the wrong way. He wasn't going the way God wanted him to, but he chose that path. And he was faking people out. He was faking all these sailors out. They're all faked out, you know. We got a lot of people in the house of God faking but you can't fake God out. See, Jonah was faking the people out. They were faked out for a little while. And the storm came. We know the movement came and all those things happened. And all of a sudden, those people on board that boat realized that somebody on board that boat was going the wrong way, yeah. was causing this to happen. It wasn't just some natural nature phenomena that was taking place. It was a storm generated by disobedience. Mm -hmm. And it was affecting, listen, it was affecting everybody. It wasn't just Jonah wasn't just one person. We learned on Wednesday night from Pastor Jesse, who's back in Corona. Pastor Jesse, I know you're all done with your service. And Sister Kapua and uh, a few others were there today as she's celebrating her birthday in Cali. And so she was there. And I saw some pictures of uh, Corona this morning. Uh, they're done. And they're, 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 when we start, they're done already. Uh, different time frame. But um, he preached on Wednesday night about just one person can make such a big difference. 
on a positive or a negative. One person might not think, well, I don't have enough stamina, I don't have enough this, I don't have enough uh, influence, I don't have the proper office, I don't have enough money. Let me tell you what, God's not interested in all of that. We learned that one word, yeah? Availability. Amen. One simple word that causes God to say, I choose you. Yeah. I choose you. We might look at our abilities and what we have or what provisions we have at the time, but he says, I choose you. Amen. I choose you to make a difference. And yeah, it takes stages, and yeah, it goes through different cycles. Of course, we all go through them. But we can be going the wrong way, thinking we're right on mark. So you may fool the ones around you, but there's no way you're going to fake out the master. There ain't no way we can fake him out. I've been on that trail too many times, so I know. Every time I went that way, thinking I'm going to go so far, and then I just bottom out. Amen? I got to the point in my own life where I just about lost everything. I had to get to that point where I realized, man... This is just a dead-end street for me. So you know what? I was pulling the short end of that stick. So I'm going to share some things about that short end of that stick. I'm going to show that it can be a positive power if you're in the right place at the right time. And you can see how from the Old Testament to the New Testament, they used what they call pulling lots in most translations, L-O-T, a lot. You pull a lot. Well, I call a stick or a straw, whichever you want to do. You know, put it in your hand, right? You're going to learn as we read the word. We're going to start with Jonah, but we're going to go a lot deeper than that. You're going to find out that in the Old Testament, they wouldn't just use that power. They would put it in their hand, and they would cast the lots upon your lap. So you don't get to choose. They don't see it. So one person is holding it. They take it and go, boom, 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 boom. And then they go, what you got? Let me see your sticks. Let me see your straws. So they actually cast it upon you. The point of that is that in every translation you read, it says, it is from the Lord. Yeah. Every translation. I'm going to show you that working, even Pastor Bobby used the word chance, and she's accurate when we were talking the other day. The word chance is exactly attached to pulling sticks, yeah. to pulling straws, to pulling lots. That word chance is not a negative. It means you trust in God's providence for that to take place and him for him to choose. Amen. Yeah. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning. So listen, you got a chance. If you're faking out, bailing out, or trying to freak everybody out, you can get delivered today. Amen. It's a good day to be alive. God bless you. Let's turn the screen on. Short end of the sticks. That's not an H. That's a K at the end, just to make sure you guys know the font. But I looked at me and he goes, Dad, it says short end of the stitch. I said, no, it's a K. <laughs> just a different font. So, you know, we got in there and looked at it. Pet Sparrow was sharing. As soon as, thank you, everybody. God bless you. But we got to realize that, see, Jonah didn't get into that belly of that monster, the whale, whatever it is until he went the wrong way. And when you go into that area, you go into an area of your life where you choose a different way than God has patterned, he'll let you go that way because it's your choice. He has given us free will. If the angels had it in heaven and rebelled and they knew about it and took care of business there, same thing will happen. Well, what happened in heaven? They got cast out. Jonah, we're going to learn, he got cast out of that boat. Those guys figured it out. He got the short end of the stick. So again, the message basically is focused on the salvation power of resurrection when you're in the belly. I want to talk about before you even get to the belly. Amen. Hopefully we can avoid the belly. The belly of a whale or a monster in the water isn't someplace you want to be. Sometimes that's the world just absorbent of everything that causes us and causes us to be surrounded by it. So when you're ready, let's read together. Thank you. God bless you. Jonah 1.7. This is the Message Bible. I like what it says because it's easy to understand and it reads very simple. So we're going to use that translation. You let me know when you're ready. You can read with me if you want. Let's go. Then the sailors said to one another, let's get to the bottom of this. Let's draw straws to identify the culprit on this ship who's responsible for this disaster. So they drew straws. Joah got the short straw. Father, we thank you that Jonah ended up with the short straw, but yet today we're going to end up on the other end of that straw. We're going to be on the receiving end of God, the blessing end of God, because we're going to choose to be in that position in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I shared you, when, and I'm going to share scriptures as we go along, but one of the most powerful PowerPoints in this that you learned, as I learned, as I read and studied, is that one who trusts God has to trust that he's going to make a decision, although we made a decision already to trust God. Are you with me? So we actually had the decision. It was in our lap. We chose to trust God. So now they don't have enough physical evidence. This is what it is. There's not enough evidence that they can go, it's you, it's you, it's you, it's you. They don't want to blame game. But they need help. They need someone to guide their decision. 
So they made the decision to trust God. Actually, in the readings, if you study in Ungers and you look at the uh, concordance and you check it out in the Hebrew and the Greek, they match up. It says when you draw lots, L-O-T-S is what they use that term, or draw a stick or a straw, whatever, you're going to say to God, I, tr I made a decision because I don't have enough physical evidence to be able to make this decision. I'm going to trust you for my decision, so we're going to cast lots. We're going to draw this. This seems almost crazy, doesn't it? That a bunch of sticks could make that kind of a decision. But yet it says in that chance is the providence of God himself. That's how the writing goes. So this is actually what they do. In the Old Testament, they actually used stones too way back when. And they'd cover up the stones and they'd go, pick. You know, it's like the guy, you know, the magician go like that. But everyone has a stone underneath that one's just a little smaller. But what they did was, again, trust God to make that decision for them. Not the decision to trust God. That's our part. See, so you might say, well, God made the decision. No, unless you make a decision today to trust God, you're not making the right decision. You're making a decision to trust yourself or myself and my evidence that I have or the physical things that we have available. But these guys knew. We didn't know. They knew everybody on the boat, but they knew somebody was a culprit. I like the message yeah. Bible. Who's the culprit? Let's figure this out. I've got to find out who the guy is. So they couldn't accuse because they didn't have enough what? Evidence. evidence. <laughs> and faith has different kind of evidence, doesn't it? Yeah. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not, not seen. seen. They couldn't see the evidence. God knew the evidence, and he knew where Jonah was supposed to be. And that's why it's so important we understand. God's knowing you're running. That's right. Some of us walk away, and we think, or we're walking the wrong way, and we think God don't notice because we're going slow. He notices everything about us. Every move we make. He knew when I was dealing drugs. He knew when I was all messed up. He knew when I was dying. But the only one that could save me was him. So I made the choice to say yes. That was my choice. He did the rest in guiding me, showing me. Yeah, we have to study. Yes, but he sent me the people. Bible study at my house. Pastor comes over. I don't have time to go over my history. I went over this whole thing over the weekend last. And I said, man, I am so thankful. You see, we know the past. We live in the present. But then nobody here knows the future. You might think you do, but no. Only God knows that future. So I'm asking you to remember what he's done for you in the past. Live in the present and look toward the future. Because let me share another scripture I'm going to share with you. Shows you the outcome. See, the stick drawing, the straw drawing, the stone moving is about the outcome. Not about the income. It's about what's to happen, not what's happening. You see, we focus too much on the drawing of it. We're not focusing on what's coming from it. Are you with me? So there's a positive that comes from that too. So I want to give you some information. Is that all right? You notice there's nobody in the boat. Everybody got thrown out of this one. Sometimes maybe you need to throw everybody out on the boat. I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. So in that message Bible, it does say it very clearly. This is something we've got to understand. This is by definition. Uh, by definition of a, the, the ungers and the concordance, when you look it up and you match up your numbers with your those that know about that. Nowadays, we use the telephone, right? You know, we look up everything right before. It used to be like 10 books. You travel with 10 books, you know. We come from that school. I come from that school. We didn't have the phone available. You know, we had flip tops. And I had pagers before that. Didn't even have a telephone. I had to look for a public telephone to, oh, the pager's going off. I've got to call the boss, you know. At least I remember that. I know the young people are like, what? That's like inconvenient, ridiculous, you know. Especially even when I was driving truck, you have to, oh, you know. If you didn't have like a radio system in the truck, you know. So this is the definition according to the concordance on the areas of pulling lots or the short end of the stick or pulling sticks or straws. It says, much that we attribute to chance is due to the providence of God. The actual shield and protection. This is a powerful word, providence, if you look at it. Whenever I see that word, I stand too. I come at alert. Just like in the military, I just stand too. Because that word tells me, like George Washington, the first president, it was stated that he is a man of providence, so he was. That means he was protected. And the enemy, Satan, as well as nobody else could touch him. You've got to study history to understand where we came from, to end up how we ended up in this mess today. And we're in a mess. I'm not going to speak against anybody. We're in a mess. I wish George Washington was president. He'd straighten up everybody. 
because he fought battles that nobody else could. Crossing that Delaware, over 2,000 died from frostbite, pneumonia, and so many other things. But not a hair on his head was touched. Snipers on the mark, and they couldn't touch him. They lowered their firearms. Even on the uh, picture we have of him, if you read the back, it shows about a British sniper that had him in sight and could not shoot. Chief Indian chiefs were trained with weapons of man's weapons, not their bows and arrows and tomahawks and knives, but they were trained with firearms that were long distance. And some of these guys, they were marksmen, some of these Indians. And they stated, after everything was over, they had him in his sight so many times, and they could not kill him. He was noted to the Indian tribes, the man that could not die. Providence. Isn't it funny that pulling straws is providence? I think that's amazing. It's a patch not to a person, but to an event. So you know what you're saying? You know, I just can't decide. Now, husbands and wives, you're not supposed to do this. I'm not, I cannot decide to beat my wife or my husband anymore. I'm going to pull straws. It's only you going to pull the straw. It doesn't work that way. You know, if you're married, that's it. You're done. You're done. And so, providence, when I saw that word, I did stand too. And it says, listen, providence... The providence of God. Building faith and trust. So its whole objective is to be, build faith and trust in, in God from us. And then it says, when lacking physical evidence, always from Old to New Testament, lots were pulled. Trusting that be the providence of God. When we are going the wrong way, we'll end up on that short end of the stick. Even if it's spiritual and you don't get to see it, it'll happen. We may not get swallowed by a big fish. I wouldn't want that either. But you may not get swallowed by a big fish, but the world will swallow you up. It will swallow you. It will take you in a gulp. It won't even have to chew on you. It will just swallow you up. You know the old saying, they had it in business world, they have it in the world today. If you stand for nothing, you'll fall for anything. we got a world falling for everything today. Everything. And until it comes close to home, you don't realize how close it is. My niece just passed away. She didn't pass away from COVID. She passed away from acute kidney failure that was caused by the medicine that they gave her for COVID. Thank you. Somebody know what I'm talking about. I was the last one to speak to her before they, they innovated her. She sounded powerful. She had a hard time breathing. It was a matter of time. Prophet Nathan passed away three hours after he was innovated. You got to know the truth in your own life. This is no game. Bible says power, yeah, life and death in the power of the tongue. Elijah went through something and he said, thank you, son. He said once, challenged by these worshipers of these false deities, he said, you choose today who you're going to serve. You serve God or you can serve the other side. He also said this. He said, choose life and not death. Choose life. He said, choose life or death. I mean, come on, it's a no-brainer, right? Choose life. But some people are so proud, so stubborn, so misled by their own minds. That they go their own way. God is not playing. You will be shut down. Let me tell you something about the short end of the stick. you got to start all over again. So it's not God's going to destroy you. By all means, He loves us. He loves everybody. you got to start all over again. I had started over so many times, I cannot even keep count. Only when I submitted my life to God, became born again, asked Jesus in my heart, and submitted to His ways through His Word. Not playing everybody to get what I wanted. See, that was the world. And if you're doing that as a Christian... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to boldly say, you're not a Christian. That's a lie. You're living a lie. A Christian is one who believes in and follows Jesus Christ, by definition. So you can be a believer and not be a Christian. Plenty of people believe in God. So do the, come on, the demons, and tremble. They know the word. She, Pastor, Sister Charlene's right. They know the word. The enemy knows the word. That's why he uses it against you. And when you're not tapped into the Holy Spirit, which is in you, if you're born again, there's no way you can defend yourself. You attack the enemy in the flesh and you will lose, just like me. Lost every time. Almost lost my life in the process of that thinking that I got it all together. God is good. Today I'm giving you information. If you're going the wrong way, just change. Israelites were blessed in the Old Testament. Cloud by day, fire by night. Can't miss that, huh? Anybody run astray, you already know you're running astray. But no, we come to church today in comfortability. And we sit down and this whole world is turning everything around. From anything you're taking, from vaccines to anything else, it's all about convenience. They're looking to who they can convince and control. 
I share it from this pulpit because it's the truth. If you study our history, look back over 200 years, see how it started, see where it is. The only one I yield control to is the, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one. He's the master. I submit unto God, right? Resist the enemy and he shall run away. The only way you're going to do that is submit to God first. You can't think you can defeat Satan with your words and with your lies and with your covering up. I'm not accusing. I'm saying none of that works. He's the father of lies. If you're lying, you're serving him. And if we serve him, how can we defeat him? No way. The blood of Jesus is the power to defeat. Don't go for the belly of the whale. That's the world. It wants to eat you up. It wants to lie to you, keep you in that compartment. I'm not saying all medicine is bad. I'm not saying all doctors are not telling the truth. I'm not saying there aren't good people in government. I'm saying there are some liars, some evil and wicked people that are making decisions at high places for everybody else, and their influence seems to be controlling so many issues. I won't quote too much, but I'll say this, and I was, I was blessed when we were at the men's gathering uh, on Friday. I was listening to during the day. It wasn't a debate. It was an information release. It was a senator of Texas. And what said is what was said. It was on the abortion issue. And this is what was said. It's going to the Supreme Court. And she said it shouldn't. It shouldn't go to the Supreme Court. It should go to the people. Because the Supreme Court designates laws. But this is not a law. It's a constitutional issue that's already been established. Very smart lady. And she said, so it shouldn't go to the Supreme Court. It should go to the people. And because if the people vote, New York and California, in case you don't know, you can abort that baby down the birth canal track. That's nine months. That's murder, ladies and gentlemen. I was pro-life from 15. I wasn't even a Christian when I saw them in a, in a video selling body parts through my PE class. That's when I became transformed. It was about 14 or 15. You understand the truth of life? This is truth. We're word of truth, so I'm not going to give you some shenanigans in here. I'm going to give you everything that's already been verified. So why am I sharing this? Well, because this is where we're going. This is the twisting. They want control. If, a, if some place decides to do that, then God's going to deal with that. Yes. But the people should have a voice to, to say what they feel Amen. about the Constitution that protected them. Yes. That was created by men like that, men of providence, George Washington. Abraham Lincoln was a man of providence. And he went out early. Now, sometimes it's premature. But you know what I always ask myself? This is just me. Huh? I say, where was his Secret Service guy? He should have caught that slug. Because usually they surround them. But no, they waited wide open. So that means something was happening behind the scenes. It's amazing what money will do, you know. It's amazing what money will do. So I'm not trying to get into politics. I'm trying to say I don't want to get swallowed by no fish. Amen. So the consequence of our actions based on our decision will cause us to be in a situation that we may not want to be in. But it's still your decision. And even if you're not listening here today, you're going to get this. If you're doing it outside the grip of God, you're back where you started. You know how many times I went back home to my mama with a big mouth leaving and a small mouth coming back? Because I didn't have anywhere to go. I messed up again. But sooner or later, your parents go to heaven if they live long and prosper. And you can't go to mama no more. You can't go to daddy no more. It's you. When I came back from overseas, I actually went to my mom. Mom, can I stay here for a little while? Except this time I lost my room. I didn't have my privacy. And I rented 400 a month for a little bed in the patio. I mean, that really sucked. No privacy, no telephone, no nothing. Shared a bathroom. Everybody got a bedroom but me. And I'm an adult now. I just came back from overseas. I'm like, this really is not good. I'm going to have to really work on doing something here. But that's because I knew I didn't have any place to go. I, I came back. I was, again, starting fresh with new life and different things, you know, going through my my heart and my life and some people get mad when I speak the truth but let me tell you what I'm trying to help you today it gets better I ain't done yet so in Acts 126 the message Bible it does share on a positive point that sometimes they're not sure by the evidence and they didn't know at this point who to choose for another disciple so in Acts 126 it says then they drew, sh they drew straws Matthias won and was counted with the 11 apostles so now they're choosing another apostle so see how positive that is? He's at the right place at the right time. He's following God. He's doing what God wants him. So he ends up there. They go, you know, we don't know who to choose. We're, we're at this standstill. We don't have enough physical evidence. Everybody look good. Every, I've seen so many pastors, and I'm not going to name names, pick the wrong person. And they split the church. 
because of their independent spirit. I know of those people. And this is what I'm talking about. So this is why they're going, I'm not sure. You know, I'm not sure about this. So let's pull some straws. Because we got some people in church that think they know all that in a bag of chips. Let me tell you something. You can be tough in the world for a little while, but you won't last that long. There's always somebody tougher than me. Always somebody tougher than you. And that an insult just the way it is. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want to meet the Rock Dwayne. You know what I mean? Even though my name is Rocky, I think the challenge of our names might be a little different. <laughs> Squeeze me in his arm or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know. But the point is, is that when we come against the spiritual realm, we can win every time in the power of Jesus Christ. Every time. Amen. The power of the blood. Every time. Yeah. There's nothing stronger than the blood of Jesus. Amen. It should make you smile, Amen. not frown. Yeah. Nobody says, blood of Jesus. Oh. <laughs> blood of Jesus brings a smile to my face. Right now, as we're, I'm believing for the guys working over there across at our new facility, stripping the floors and the carpet and everything else, that maybe they'll get saved after we were there yesterday doing our part. Because, you know, I told him, oh, we're at church on Sunday. He goes, we don't go to church. Yeah, praise the Lord. You guys go ahead and work over there then. Go ahead. Anointed it with oil. We just leave God to them. But they, they wanted to start. That's how good God is. He's moving that fast. They're working on Sunday. They volunteered it. I didn't ask it. I said, we can start tomorrow. I said, tomorrow's Sunday. I know. He's the boss man. Okay, so while, I was work, while I'm preaching, they're working. Oh, no, you, you know, when you build a wall, you got to hold a sword, and you got to work with one hand, man. you got to do what you got to do. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do because this is what I'm supposed to do right now for the, the time frame given. And I believe you're here because that's where you're supposed to be for the time frame given. So if you're in the right place at the right time, going the right way, you're going to get blessed anyway. Listen, you get blessed in spite of yourself. Notice every time in the Word God did it for His sake. Oh, not for you. Oh, no, not for you. He did it for him. He saved me for him. Saved you for him. He saved us for him. Everything he does with you, through you, and for you is for him. But until you acknowledge that, you come in on the short end of the stick. You can get mad at me, but that's why you are where you are. Because if I'm speaking the truth, which I am, you can't process yourself into productivity of blessings until you receive the word of God. The word of God will last forever. Everything else is going to fall away. So get that word in you. Let it build you up. Let it encourage you. When we speak to each other, we don't got to preach. Just got to share the word of God. No, it's not like that. God is better than that. It's like when he slows down something in traffic. You get all mad because he's slowing you down. And there's an accident ahead of you. And you could have been two minutes earlier and been in the midst of that accident. You got to start to praise him for those kind of things. Start to glorify him for those kind of things. And believe me, I'm not strapping you down here or holding you down. So you're here, I believe, because you either were told you got to be here or you came here of your own free will. One or the other. So that's what happened to Matthias. He got ele- He's the next apostle. I mean, I'd be like, whoa, just because I pulled a straw? Wow. New Testament, they let you pull it most of the time. With Jonah, they pulled it. But in the older, older Testament, which means back in the day, they actually threw it on your lap. A lot of times people focus. Wow, they threw it on the lap. Why did they throw it on the lap? That's not the real focus. According to the understanding, the powerful blessing, depending upon how you draw the stick, is equal on how you receive the stick or receive the straw or whatever it is that's being used. They chose to go their own way, people, us, sometimes we do, and end up back where they started or like Jonah, end up separated from everyone and everything. See, so it even can get to that point where God separates you. In the whale, he was separated from everyone and everything. Anything he knew about was gone. He probably couldn't figure out how this whale swallowed me without eating me. As I said, if that was a Hawaiian, he'd just be glorifying, you know, like, oh, I get sashimi, I get, you know, you know, raw fish. I get, I'm good. Just cut away. But still, you're separated. You're segregated from the people. No longer in the boat. And the storm did stop, by the way, as soon as they threw him overboard. Sometimes you're in a storm because of who you're hanging out with. That's why I don't let storms in my house. I don't. I don't let storms in my house. I love, I'll help anybody that asks, but you got to get help the way God wants, not the way you expect it. It's the truth. That's how I got it from my mom, even not saved. Oh, no, you're going to live here? This is what you're going to do. You're going to pay? You got chores? I'm like an adult. Just come back home overseas, mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. do the yard, yeah, do the yard, yeah. a lot more. Clean the toilet. 400 bucks a month for a small bit in the patio get out yeah my mom would be like get out and she wasn't a Christian nor was I but she had some principles didn't she she has some ethics that actually work because you know what 
If it wasn't for my mama doing that, I wouldn't be where I am today and be able to fight the struggles through life. Then when I became born again, I realized who fights for me and with me, and I came way ahead of those things. It's the truth, isn't it? Once you receive Jesus, something got to change. At least your heart. The outside can follow later under heavy construction. Some of us just need a little tap, finishing nails. Some of us need a slamming hammer for the frame. Papa! Some of us need a sledge. We had a perfect example yesterday with Pastor Al. <laughs> Put that sledge in his hand, and it's like, oh, he found his niche right there. He was waiting for that. Because we had a little demolition going on over there. Yeah, I thought I was going to do it. I told Bonai, you and me can do it. Pastor Al grabbed that, that sledge hammer like it was his. Actually, he gave it to me, but it was his. <laughs> he got that for me. But, um, but it was wonderful to see everybody working together. That's what God wants for anything we do, working together. And like Jonah, we don't want to be separated, you know. So the short end of the stick, by definition, Miriam, you can go with uh, Miriam ways or the Webster's or the different ways, but it all ends up the same. Short end of the stick, the worst end of any outcome. Any outcome. And it says this way, or the very best outcome in very rare times. So usually when you join a strick, it's not a stick or a straw or whatever. It's not always for the best of times. It's because we need some kind of direction or something that we're looking for. I don't know about you, but I thought, wow, they're still depending on like a stick. You know, I mean, how does that work? Again, not enough physical evidence. They're actually trusting God. Dating back to the 16th century, man used to use it. That's where it, basically they can record the time when it was used. That's a long time ago. Talk about hundreds and hundreds of years. That they use this method to decide. And guess what is shocking? They use this method to decide in court when they could not. There was no jury that was, what did they call those jurors? Uh, the, what did they call when they can't come to a decision? Hung jury. That's a weird word, hung jury. Huh? But a hung jury. So when it is a hung jury, bring out the sticks. No, I mean, I'd be like, what? That's way back when, probably the French and the English, you know, they were already kind of weird and different than us anyway, because we were weird and peculiar anyway. So you just got a bunch of dysfunctional families all over the place. But they're pulling straws, they're pulling sticks to decide the final judgment on a person's life. How'd you like to be sitting in that seat? I wouldn't. I'd be like, oh, please, 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 let it be the long stick, let it be the long stick. Let it all short sticks and one long. Okay, let it be a short, let it be a short, let it be a short. You know, whatever they're using, short or long sticks, it doesn't matter. And when it came to the party in times of guilt, even in biblical times to decide adultery. Now we know there are certain tests that they go through in the Old Testament, but they bypass that when the husband is in total disagreement, but somebody else in the higher ranks of priesthood knows that this happened. So they hold it, and only one lock is pulled. The priests pull it. One holds it, and the priest goes. And that decides. That one stick, that one straw. How's that? That's pretty heavy stuff. I don't know about it. Have you seen this? I'm going, wow. A life in balance depends on pulling the right stick, the right straw, the right lock, because they trust the providence of God. They actually trust God is making the decision. This is what this is all about, trust and faith. Trust in faith. We know our scripture, Romans 11.22, right? Right? Can you put that up on the screen? Can I get somebody to put it up? I know you guys are busy. Can I get somebody to put it up? Thank you. I want us to look at that scripture just for a minute so you can understand as I'm going to be coming to a close what God is expecting of us and we still have a chance in 2021 before we hit 2022. Thank you. And not just this, the... Roman scripture, please. We like that one too. Yeah, Romans 11.22. If you can get it up. If you can't, that's okay. I can repeat it. But I'd like us to see it as I read it. Thank you. Be patient. Thank you. Unexpected uh, requests. Thank you. I like the cross. I want to make a point about trust. It says, Notice how God is both kind and severe. He is severe toward those who disobeyed, but kind to you if you continue, if we continue to trust in His what? His kindness. But if you stop trusting, you will also be. That's the stick. 
Thank you very much. I appreciate that. This is the word for 2021. All year. And we look at it sometimes. We come in. Oh, yeah, I know that. Oh, yeah, Pastor, just throw it up there. No, I seek the Lord for months asking him for a scripture for our year. And he has not disappointed, eh, body of Christ? Because when he said we're going in Joshua 3, 4, someplace we've never been before in 2019 for 2020, the whole world shut down. And he gave this little congregation a word of prophetic power to understand that he's got this. He knew what was going to happen. You see, I know and acknowledge that. If you don't, you end up with the short end of the stick. Some of you will leave here today and go, I don't believe anything he said. I really don't care. Because my point is not to make you believe. My point is to proclaim. I don't got to prove nothing. It's already been proven through the word. So you can get mad. You can reject. It's not off me. I walk out of here and I'm good. As long as I can take a nap, have my lunch, I'm good. If I can't take a nap, there might be something going on. They won't let you sleep. You know? go, okay, better go water the yard and hear what God says. You know? it, it is. And you know what? Even if you don't have sprinklers, you can still water the yard. It's okay. And if you have sprinklers, you can still water the yard. Amen. Word of truth. That's right. That's right. Not word of doobies. Some of you don't know what that is. That is marijuana sticks. <laughs> Just stating. That's not what we do. One of the things we have to understand, um, dating back to the 16th century is where I left off. Proverbs 18.18 18 says this, amplified version. To cast lots puts an end to quarrels. It gives you, de it defines it for you in the book of wisdom. And decides between powerful contenders. Which means, remember the time of Solomon? The two women, the baby? One baby died, she switched them out, right? And Solomon had them come in, brought them up. They couldn't decide, accusing each other. Two contenders. He was a diff little bit different. He had a different kind of stick. What did he say? Bring the baby forward. Give me my sword. Cut that baby in half. Knowing that the true mother would never let that happen, would rather sacrifice giving her child to someone else than to let that child die. Because that mom is not proud. That mom is not arrogant. That mom is not conceited. That mom is not evil. That mom is the lover of her child. She fought for the child, but now she has to sacrifice the child to allow that child to live. You got to see how God works in us like this. When you do what God wants, when you do outside pride and outside the arrogance of things that we do every day in life, God moves in that. Pride will never, ever bless you. Before pride go it, destruction. We well know that for Satan, who rebelled against God. It was his pride, Isaiah 14, thinking he could rise above God, rise above him, rise above the master. And he was in heaven. You know why he hates us so much? Because that's where we're going. He can't go there no more. He all piled down. He's all piled down, done, done. We get to go there. It's not bragging rights. I'm just saying we get to go there. So he knows where we're going. And he wants to take what Jesus said. He wants to take you screaming into hell. He's not going to win, but he's going to take as many as he can with him. Because his end is evident. His outcome is already known. It's already written. But we got to be in that book of life. We got to be in that book of life. If we're not in that book of life, when it's opened according to Revelation, and it's read out, you can't put your name in there. Ain't no way you're going to cheat and sneak underneath there and scribble your name in there. You cannot go, no, no, it's in there. I, th I know, somebody told me. <laughs> yeah. God's going to be like, nobody told you nothing. If your name is in there, you're in. If it's out, you're done. That's not being mean. He's saying, you receive my son and the sacrifice given. From Old to New Testament, it was trusted that whichever way it ended up, and this is the term I want you to remember. It's written. It's from the Lord. It doesn't matter if it falls in your lap. It doesn't matter if you pick it out. It doesn't matter if you draw it yourself. What the most important thing, it says in providence of power, it is from the Lord. In every term used. And I just read you the scripture. It is from the Lord. I'll read it now. Proverbs 16.33 amplified. It says, the lot is cast into the lap. But it's every decision is from the Lord. Every decision. You get to decide to trust God or not. That's your choice. That's mine. Once we trust God, we have to believe that He's going to have us in the best interest for whatever we need, whatever helps us, whatever to accomplish for us. Or you can choose the other way. That's up to you entirely. Like I said, I'm proclaiming. I'm not proving nothing. If you're not doing it for you, do it for your children and your children's children. Because let me be blunt. Without Jesus, 
you don't go to heaven. I put my life on that because I believe that with all my heart. There's no way I can get to the Father except through Jesus. No way I can get to Jesus except from the Father. It says it in the Word. And heaven is bound through that power. Not through any other church. Not through any other ministry, which means any other body, any other way, any other worldly example of good deeds. Humani There's plenty of humanitarians. They spend all their money saving whales. But let's kill a child. I love whales. Don't get me wrong. I think whales should be saved. And honos too. Turtles too. Love turtles. Beautiful creatures. But I'm not going to put them over a life of a human. When you do that, you are misvalued in your walk. So humanitarians do that. A lot of movie stars do that. They got so much money, they're saving everything else but people. I don't care who it is. The Rock is the most highest paid male actor in Hollywood. At least he was uh, the other year. But really what I look at is, what have you done for the children upon the earth? If you, I mean, if you're a quadrillionaire, if you're a trillionaire, if you're a billionaire, I mean, why try to just make more money? Why don't you just sow that seed, man? That could, if all of them got together, could end poverty, you know. It's written. They got more than enough to do it a couple of few times. Worldwide. Not just America. Worldwide. I don't have that availability, but they do. I'm not criticizing. I'm saying I'd rather be born again than a humanitarian. Because if I'm born again, I'm a humanitarian. See, it works better for our ways. So again, you know, I just want to encourage you. Don't let that hinder you that we come to that place. When we think we're right... Or even if we're wrong, when we choose God, he'll make the choice for us. When we trust God, he'll make that choice and say, hey, listen, this is the way you go. This is the decision you make. You know how sometimes he presses you and presses you, and then you're like, wow, man, I just don't feel good about this. Just watch the indicators. Military know that. You always watch for indicators. When they could save a life of the whole battalion, the whole platoon, even the small unit, or a convoy before it gets hit. Look for the indicators. You know how you go, oh, what was that? Or what is that? Then boom! They're indicators that somebody's planning against you. Somebody's coming against you. Somebody's doing something inappropriate that may cause harm to you. And if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is who He is, then that's your choice. But I guarantee you, you won't go to heaven. You're not going to go. Some people say, that's mean. Don't say that. No, I say that. And I say that at services too. And I'll be saying it this Friday at my niece's service. Because I had the privilege of witnessing her back to Christ. Back because she had backslid and because she had witnessed before when she was younger. She used to come to church once in a while. And I had the privilege of sharing that her soul is clean. I had the privilege of that. That was a privilege. So I know and I'm confident she's in heaven. She's a young girl. She's a young mother. She's got two daughters and a three-year-old son. That's sad to watch the pain in people. And you know, it always is more when it hits home, yes? But let me tell you how God taught me. So when you go to the hospital, you treat them that's like that's your family in that bed. So when you pray, you pray earnestly for them. You don't just go in there and give some words. Oh, it doesn't involve me. I'm going to go home, have, a, you know, have some things. I'm going to go to a picnic with my family. Every life matters to God. Every soul matters to God. You don't got to be a pastor. or You don't got to be this. All you have to do is care. Care more than yourself and for your family, which you should care for. But care about others around you too. But you're not going to get what you want. You're going to get what you need the way God wants to do it. I want you to get that. You're not going to get what you want. You're going to get what you need the way God wants you to have it. If you submit to God. Otherwise, embrace the world. I did. I did all the things that I wanted to do and almost died. So I'm so thankful. So God didn't save me for me. He saved me not for my wife, not for my one handsome son, not for this church, not for this body. He saved me for him. To do his will to follow as best I can whatever I know hey I got to do this it's in the word I'm going to do it and it may cause some problems I read an article last night uh, from um, not an article but a, it, was, it was like a little article in Mike Murdoch's book that actually Reverend Ty gave me it was just a one sentence it says sometimes your biggest enemy is in your household I was like uh oh but don't look at your wife or your husband don't be picking on anybody huh not my household okay but I just, I just say yeah, don't look at your wife or your husband don't, you know, don't do that but what they're saying is sometimes you're in a household that has more than, like we've got plenty of families in Hawaii that live sometimes, or sometimes we allow things to happen. It's our choice. And some people say, that's mean, you've got to love everybody. Well, I do love everybody. I have an older son that chooses the world. I'm not going with him. But you know what hasn't moved? Me. 
I'm in the same place I always was, living in the same place I'm living. And he forgets where I live. Forgets. He calls, listen, I know he calls. If you're watching me, I love you, buddy. But let me tell you what, don't only call me when you had a few suckers, huh? Because I love you anyway. If he's not watching, that's okay. He's probably mad don't watch anyway. But if he does watch, then he can get to it. Which means is your emotions get higher. Anybody ever been, like, not drunk, drunk, where you don't know, but enough, you're high enough, you go, oh, I feel so bad. My dad, I got to call my dad. I want to text him. <laughs> and I respond. Hey, how you doing, son? How's it going? You know, but I always says, can I call him up? Can I call him up? Can I call him up? Yeah. Wait, hold it up. But he, did, he does respond. But that's what happens when we, our emotions start to get on the high end. I learned something with God. Don't ever make a decision based on emotions. You'll make the wrong decision. It's based on how you feel at the time. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. <laughs> you got to, you know, that's not going to lead you the right way. You got to have the word predominant in your life. And be, I know, right? And be able to do the things that God wants you to do. Don't go astray. Don't go the wrong way. The message that I wanted to share in closing today is just to choose to trust God. You don't have to pull sticks. You don't have to do that. He does. What is best in our lives is going the way God is going. That's what it is. So no sticks pulling today. I don't got a bunch of sticks in here. I don't got straws. Thank you, son. I don't got any straws. I don't got any stones. I might throw it at some of you. You know, you never know. If I was in the Old Testament, I'd be long gone under those stones. You know. But we're not. We're in the new beginning of the power of God in a time of the new world order being birthed. So I'm not saying these are the end days, the only days. I'm saying in all the years that I've served God, and this year makes about 30 years now. Amen. And I'm thankful to God for that. Because if it wasn't for Him, I couldn't stick to it. You see, anybody can do one time. Anybody can praise one time. Anybody can praise two times. But how about you praise every time? Whether it's up or down, whether it's good or sad or hard, or whether things happen that you can say, praise the Lord. So when my niece passed, I was sad, but I said, thank God that she received Christ. Thank God that she's in heaven. Now, it doesn't help us here. You know, the hearts are heavy, the husband, the mom, and, and everybody connected with my brother and everybody else. So it's sad, but yet it rejoices because I know that her outcome didn't have to pull no straws, man. She didn't end on the wrong end of the stick. She's in heaven with the Father now, and she don't have any problems there. But when I do a service for life, I let people know at the end, and I want to tell you, and I say it on film, unless you receive Jesus, you'll never see her again. That's what they're going to hear Friday as they heard in any service like that, or if it's a male, it doesn't matter. And in some services there at Blythe, the hands went up, Pastor Kapuni couldn't even count on that day. I give God all the glory. You know what that means? People heard the word. Maybe they got scared a little bit, but their love for that person drew them to Christ. And that's the most important love that we can have, that love of Christ. And we come to that conclusion today. There ain't no greater gift to me than salvation. Once you're saved, you're on your way. You're on the trail. You're on the road. Amen? You're on the path. It's your choice to stay on it. Does it mean it'll be bumpy? Yeah. Does it mean you hit gravel? Some of us still got the gravel marks on our face. You know, but nevertheless, we're up and we're moving. An upright person, a righteous person, which is an upright person with God, stand, good standing with God, they fall down seven times, God gets you up. Man, I'm excited. I fell down a, a few times. I lost count. And I'm thankful that the Lord is faithful and merciful. Amen? He loves all of us. But we have to choose. And our choice always has to be not caroused or threatened, but because that's what He wants. Because He loves us. He cares for us. This morning, that's what I got to share. If you're watching, that's what I got to share. Don't jump out of the boat. You know, there was nobody in the boat. In that one. Don't jump out of the boat. Don't pull no straws. Don't shift no rocks. Don't be a fakey achy. Because God will find you out. He already knows. You might fool the people around you like Jonah did for a little while. Amen. Like Esther did, you know, standing. She's a queen now. Not a queen. Mordecai said, yeah, you don't do what you're supposed to do. You and your father's family are going to die. <laughs> die with all of them together. That's what he said. He said, God put you in that place to make a difference for others. You're important. 
you being here today is important to God. This one person, one day, can change other lives, can change everything. I believe it, but it's up to you what you believe. I believe that. I believe that when you got to do it, you got to do it when you're told to do it. Not later on when everybody's telling you you should do it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You always got people telling you, even family, no, not yet, wait. You got to listen to God because their lives may depend on it. Their eternal lives may depend on it. Amen. God is good. If you're listening, I just want to encourage you. God loves you. He cares for you. In the house, most of you, if I don't know you, you're born again. If you haven't, this is an opportunity to receive him. When I received Christ, it wasn't about joining a club or an organization. I became part of the body, you know, after I received Christ and, and knew that, hey, man, this is what you got to do. This is how it should be. I was homophobic. I wouldn't even hold hands with guys. I was just so out there in the world. But God brought me one day at a time back, one day at a time back. Amen. Even as an usher, I used to almost, almost get into fights. I mean, it was terrible at first, but it's like, you know what I mean? I was like, and the, and the enemy would, would use that against me sometimes. You know, because I'm still going through deliverance, right? You know? You know, somebody's yelling in church with drunk. He's like, hey, cut it off. <laughs> and then one guy told me one time, would you go in 86 me? I go, what? How do you know I work in a bar? You know, because that's where I can. Right? But don't you think? I mean, I think like that. You know, I'm like, oh, no. But that's where God changes us. And he uses what we have for his glory and makes it right. No matter what, he's the deliverer. So this morning, if you're in the house, if you're watching, two things. One, if you never received Jesus, I want to pray with you. No recorded or rehearsed prayer. If you feel like you're in that state where you're going the wrong way, that's understandable. We all do that at times. And maybe you know Jesus. You already had that happen to you. But yet you want to refocus. You want to ask him, hey, listen, uh, I kind of went my own way. I want to make it right. I don't want to jump out of the boat. I want to stay in the boat with you, Jesus. And I want to make it right. Those are the two calls I'm sending out today. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, we just thank you this morning. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And we ask you to touch each and every one. I may not know their need, but you know their needs. So if we're watching, whether now or later on the archives of YouTube or um, uh, Facebook, whatever it is that you're going to be watching from later, it still has the power to deliver. Let us not go the wrong way. Let us not have to pull sticks. Let us just thank the Lord this morning. And all you have to do is pray with me very simply. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. Forgive me my sins. I receive you today. And I thank you, Father, for sending your Son to die for me. Seated at your right hand, I now confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I may have made a few mistakes along the way, but I refocus and ask you to fill me right now, Jesus. And Holy Spirit, lead my path in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. If you prayed that prayer, give us a call. Give us an email. Help us out. We want to send you a Bible, whatever the case may be. We want to help you send your prayer request. Every prayer request is important, whether it's a job, a healing, a deliverance, or even the power of miracles, which, which God can do. Amen? God is good. If you're watching, listen. If you have a church, you're not going yet, rally up. Get ready to go back to the house of God. Get ready to encourage each other. Send your tithe to your church. Don't send it here. Send your tithe to your church. If you're not a tither, become one. You can send an offering. You just go to wordoftruthmaui.org. Take you to the site. There's a green button. We have 22 outreaches just updated the other day. I counted them. So we're at 22 still. And we're praising the Lord for it. Amen. Island-wise, statewide, and also in the United States and abroad. But you've got to take care of your own first before you can even advance anywhere else. So if people are starving around you, but you're helping them in Africa, that's kind of hard. Or the Philippines, there's a lot of poverty. But we got to help home, you know, around us, right? I can name them off. Feed my sheep. I can name them all off. I didn't ask you to raise your hand because you know who you are. If this is your first time, and if you're in the house doing it, or you can call us up and let us know. But no matter what, we love you. God bless you. And we'll see you soon. Amen. And amen.